What's going on, guys? This is Tower Number Nine, and we're coming to you here live with some uh, with some Star Wars Unlimited on Tabletop Simulator. So here we have uh, on the left we have His Dudeness, who is playing a Command Vader build, and on the right we have Faith playing an Aggression Krennic build. And I happen to know these are some kind of different builds from what we might see normally. So the um, the Vader build that his dudeness is using is actually based on the build that Tyler Parrott used in the recent developer constructed gameplay stream. Um, so he is using a uh, he's using kind of a trooper based Vader deck instead of the more traditional like heavy ramp type builds that we've seen uh, having a lot of success competitively. Um, and then over here we have uh, we have. Faith's build, which is going to be a uh, aggro Krennic, and we're going to see if this can do better than the um, the more commonly uh, you know the more commonly seen Krennic builds, which are there have been a fair few Command Krennics, but I think unfortunately Command Krennic hasn't really hasn't really been able to do that well. It hasn't been quite up to the challenge uh, of dealing with Vader, uh, interestingly enough. So we're going to see if Aggression Vader can do a little... Uh, Aggression Krennic can do better against a Vader build, even if it's a less conventional one. So early on in this game, we saw the uh, Seasoned Short Trooper there. There was a Fifth Brother, the a Snow Trooper Lieutenant played by his Dudeness, clearing out the Fifth Brother... Open fire. Open fire on the. Hmm. It looks. It yeah. It looks like he plays an. It looks like he plays an open fire on the um, on the shore trooper lieutenant, and then. Uh, his dudeness plays a volunteer soldier. So this is a unit that was actually previewed during that same developer stream. So three costs two three with raid one. Uh, if you control a trooper unit, it costs one less to play. So at three, it's a pretty uncompetitive unit, but at two, it's pretty decent. Okay, so then uh, Faith realizes that he should have used the open fire on the snow trooper and then used Tarkin Town to clear out that guy. And his dudeness lets him retroactively do that. So now... Those guys are cleared. I guess we're saying that he used Tarkintown first, or actually, regardless of which way he used it, there would still be a trooper unit in play to allow the um, to allow the volunteer soldier to get the discount here. So, uh, volunteer soldier still in play. Looks like uh, looks like Faith is drawing some kind of high end cards here. I see a fallen lightsaber, but. Aside from that, we have a a ruthless raider, Count Dooku, Emperor Palpatine, lots of big stuff. Okay, well, it looks like uh, looks like we could see some some of these larger units coming out in the next few turns. I think this turn we're likely to see the fallen lightsaber here played on Director Krennic himself. Wow, a uh, general tag uh, deployed. Two cost two two when played, give an experience token to each up to three trooper units. In this case, giving an experience token to the volunteer soldier, making it a uh, three four with raid one. Not terrible. Uh, Krennic hits the board. The volunteer soldier attacks Krennic's base. Krennic indeed wields the fallen lightsaber, making him a powerful uh, five ten. Okay, his Dudeness uses a uh, his so his Dudeness deals one damage to Director Krennic with Vader's ability. This actually makes Krennic more powerful. So Vader can spend a resource and exhaust to deal one damage to a unit and one damage to a base if you played an Imperial card this phase. And the um, so then Krennic, uh, each friendly damaged unit gets plus one power that applies to himself. So Krennic with that lightsaber is able to hit for a mighty six damage, while also restoring uh, restoring two damage from his own base. So a powerful swing there from Director Krennic. And uh, I think this turn we're likely going to see a six cost card scene play. Whether that be the Ruthless Raider or the Academy Defense Walker, um, there is also a chance that he could go for a second Fallen Lightsaber on Krennic, but I think that doesn't make sense. 
If I if I were if I were Faith, I would probably resource the Fallen Lightsaber and just think about I'm gonna play one big card each turn for a while. Um, but it's possible he'll decide differently. Let's see how this goes. One note also is that Kranich right now can swing for six. If he does play that other fallen lightsaber on himself, he would then be up to uh he would then be up to strength nine, which would allow him to attack and defeat Vader immediately. Looks like he ends up deciding to resource the um the R ruthless raider, which mean which may may mean that he's going to go for that double fallen lightsaber play with Director Krennic. Dudeness leads off with the uh Dudeness leads off with that uh that soldier attacking into Krennic for four Krennic left with five HP remaining, and there is a force choke in hand that could defeat Krennic immediately. If the other fallen lightsaber or the Academy Defense Walker is played first, though, it would get him out of range. It's the Academy Defense Walker. So this Defense Walker is a 5-5 five, five Sentinel, and when played, it gives an experience token to each friendly damaged unit, so that actually brings Krennic up to 11 life, so now this Force Choke will not defeat him. However, Vader will then be able to attack into or to use his ability on Krennic for the final blow. Um, so Krennic now with one life remaining, but will get a chance to attack before Vader defeats him and deal another uh, deal another hard hit to the um, to the Imperial base, most likely. So Krennic here can swing for uh, seven this time. Seven damage the to Vader's base and two two life uh or two HP repaired from Krennic's base. A lot of value from Director Krennic there, but Vader's ability is then indeed used to remove him. So we're not going to see uh we're not going to see any more attacks from Krennic this game. Um, however, we are now in an interesting spot with uh his dudeness. Only having general tag on the field against that Academy Defense Walker, but we will be able to see Darth Vader hit the field on this next turn. And Vader is a very powerful unit, as people may well be aware. So uh, that could have a high impact. However, uh, Faith does have the initial lead, and his current board is stronger. Plus, he has some really big late game plays here that could make a high impact. You know, if nothing else, he can do like Academy Defense Walker attacks into the base for five. Um, if, if we see, uh, if we see Vader attack the defense walker to remove it and he takes five damage, he could then be himself removed by Count Dooku. We could also just see attack for five and then play the other ruthless raider that he's drawn, which is just putting a lot of pressure on the base. I, I actually think Faith has the advantage in this game. I think he may well get the win. A tie advanced hits the field for his dudeness. Uh, when when played, give two experience tokens to another friendly Imperial unit. Oh, that's an interesting move. By playing that, he's going to allow Tag to attack the Defense Walker and then defeat it with Vader's ability. But that's not going to get a chance to happen because Count Dooku deploys. Uh, when played, you may defeat a unit with four or less remaining HP, and that is being used to clear General Tag. Count Dooku is also shielded, but Vader's ability is used here to remove the shield and deal one damage to base. Faith takes the initiative. Vader on the field defeats the Academy Defense Walker and deals two damage to Count Dooku. Um, ooh, and then an am ooh, spicy. First Legion Snowtrooper ambushed with the Energy Conversion Lab. Because Count Dooku has damage, uh, the First Legion Snowtrooper gains plus two attack and overwhelm. Okay. Those were some those were some cool plays by Dudeness kinda kinda trying to fight back into the game, but I think that the I think the Ruthless Raider is gonna be or no, okay, he goes for he goes for Palpatine, trying to clear off the board instead. Okay, so Emperor Palpatine, when played, deals six damage divided as you choose among enemy units. That's enough to defeat both of those units. See, I'm such an aggro player. I'm looking at this, and I just keep thinking, go for the Ruthless Raider, direct damage to the base, close out the game. But, uh, you know, Faith is trying to get more board control. Um, we see a Death Star Stormtrooper then buffed by a TIE Advanced, and then Vader's ability used to ping Palpatine, but that's not actually valid, because Vader should have gone back exhausted. Oh yeah, it looks like they see that. Okay, so then, 
Uh, looks like a tough scenario here, I think, for, um, tough scenario here for Dudeness. I think Faith is going to be able to break through here. So all he has to do is attack the base with the Emperor and then play the, play the Ruthless Raider, and he's won the game. Let's see how this goes. Emperor Palpatine swings into the base for six, only uh, one life remaining for uh, his dudeness. He doesn't have any healing or stuff to stabilize, and that that ruthless raider does direct damage to base, so I think this is it. Force choke on Emperor Palpatine, dealing five damage but not defeating him, but dudeness will be able to follow up with Vader's ability to get Palpatine off the board, but it's not going to matter with that ruthless raider in position to clear the base. Yep, and there we go. Ruthless Raider. When played or when defeated, deal 2 damage to an enemy base and 2 damage to an enemy unit. The 2 damage to the unit clears it. 2 damage to the base wins the game, and that is that. Uh, let's see if they do a game 2. Uh, very solid victory for Faith's uh, Faith's aggression. Um, so Faith had an aggression Krennic build there and was quite able to resist the... Um, quite able to resist uh, the trooper... Uh, the trooper aggro version of Vader here, based on Tyler's deck. I think they're gonna do a round two, so let's keep uh let's keep broadcasting this match. Let's see how it goes. Okay. And we do see one of the uh, newer cards in the game in hand here for um in hand here for Faith. That is uh inferno four i think that's likely to be played this turn and i'm gonna be probably highlighting it at that time or maybe i'll highlight it sooner we'll have to see um so we for the resourcing decisions an imperial interceptor and a takedown resourced for faith i think he figures that his opponent isn't running very much space stuff so resourcing the interceptor makes sense and takedown kind of a removal card maybe maybe a little slower and he already has another copy in hand so so i think he's fine with resourcing one Seems pretty reasonable. Dudeness resources General Tag, who's very conditionally good, and a Death Star Stormtrooper. A little more interesting to resource the Death Star Trooper. Very good card for Vader, but he wants to start off with the Seasoned Shore Trooper instead. Two cost, two, three. While well, you control six or more resources, this unit gains plus two power. And I think we're going to see Inferno 4 hitting the table right now. No, we're not. It's going to be the first Legion Snow Trooper. Two cost, two, three. While attacking a damaged unit, this unit gains plus two, plus zero, and Overwhelm. A little surprising to me. I would have expected Inferno 4, but maybe he's trying to contest his opponent's arena here. So Inferno 4 is a 2 cost 2-3. Two, when played and when defeated, look at the top two cards of your deck. Put any number of them on the bottom of your deck and the rest on top in any order. So this is a very solid early ship for the uh, for Vigilance uh, Vigilance Villainy. I think it's a really um, I think it's a really good card. Um, and we'll have to see uh, we'll have to see if it sees play later on in this game. General Veers hits the field. That's a big one. So Veers is a 3-3. Three, three. Other friendly Imperial units get plus one plus one. But a quick open fire from uh a quick open fire from Faith's side of the board gets General Veers off the field. Um let's go and see uh let's go and see how this is going to progress without that uh without that official. Two to the base from the shore trooper. And Faith decides to do damage to the unit, so they, they hit each other there. Uh, now, because this Shore Trooper is damaged, the First Legion Snow Trooper could potentially swing in, get plus two, plus zero, and overwhelm, defeating the opponent and doing substantial damage to the base. Um, especially because he also benefits from Krennic's passive ability, so Director Krennic aspiring to authority, each friendly damaged unit gets plus one power. And perhaps seeing that as a dangerous prospect, his dudeness attacks with the uh, with the shore trooper into the uh, opposing into the opposing unit this time rather than the base. Inferno four now hitting the field, uh, looking at those top cards, and can put any number of the top two on the bottom and the rest on top in any order. Um, and we see a cell block guard deployed here, three cost three three with sentinel. Um, might. 
It's interesting. So we could see the first Legion Snowtrooper. I'm not sure if he actually wants to deploy it as it's easily bested by the Cell Block Guard. Looks like he does. Uh, he'd rather use his resources. I think that's pretty reasonable, honestly. So two cost, two, three. When attacking a damaged unit, gets plus two, plus zero on Overwhelm. We've shown this card before, but now it is back with another copy being played here by our uh, by our man Faith. Let's see how things continue. His Duden is considering the options here. We are going to probably see Director Krennic deploying this turn. Uh, he actually had a pretty good impact on that last game, despite normally being a somewhat weaker character, thanks to a fallen lightsaber that gave him quite a bit of additional attack power. So now we're going to uh, we're going to have to see uh, we're going to have to see how things change here. Cell block guard uh, defeats the snow trooper. Inferno four swings in for two damage on the other side of the board. Krennic can of course deploy. Tarkin town used here to clear the cell block guard. Three damage to a damaged non-leader unit. His dudeness is passing here. Krennic deploys. <laughs> Agent Callus ambushes Krennic four four. Krennic swings for three into the base and repairs two. And then we see an open fire to clear out Callus. Okay. Interesting situation. Not the highest value scenario for Callus, but could be worse. Um, I think that uh, Dudeness had claimed the initiative afterwards. There wasn't going to be the opportunity to put the uh, Academy Defense Walker in front of Callus. Ooh, the Ruthless Raider hits the field. Two damage to Krennic and two damage to the base here. Krennic swings in for three. Initiative taken. Inferno four hits. Oh, okay. So he, uh, Dudas actually decides, can I ambush in and defeat uh, Inferno four? He can. Um, Inferno four's ability can be used when defeated, but it looks like maybe if he has forgotten to do this. I think it I think it's actually mandatory. I'm gonna point it out to them. I point that out and they're they're evaluating that uh Faith is now evaluating that. Top cards are an Imperial Interceptor and Count Dooku. I'm gonna guess Count Dooku on top and the Interceptor on the bottom of the deck as the Imperial Interceptor is a significantly weaker card right now. And that's exactly what we see. Count Dooku is actually a good counter to the uh, Ruthless Raider, believe it or not. Um, because with the damage that it's taken, so Count Dooku could be played and immediately defeat the Raider, and he could resolve that before he resolves his shielded, so the two damage that the Raider could then inflict would not be able to pierce his shield. It could maybe hit him for two, but then he put a shield up over that. Um, putting him in a spot where he's actually pretty hard to remove. We will, I think, see Vader this turn, and there is the possibility of a big overwhelming barrage from his dudeness. In fact, it seems very likely that we'll see that, as it could clear out Krennic and the Defense Walker in one shot here, I think. Yeah, I'd be able to do six damage, five for the defense walker, one for Krennic, and that oh but Krennic actually lives? Oh, he can't actually quite kill both because Krennic has two HP remaining. Oh, and the really interesting thing here is actually that the plus two plus two temporary HP from the overwhelming barrage takes that raider out of range of Count Dooku's ability. That's actually really big. That is really big. So Count Dooku now can't really be played to get much value. I wonder if we're going to see the Ruthless Raider from Faith instead? Oh. 
Vader can deploy here also and easily defeat Krennic. Six damage to the base from the Ruthless Raider. I think Faith now has to deploy his own Ruthless Raider, which is a much less valuable play than going for the Count Dooku move here because that overwhelming barrage is kind of stifling him. Yeah, there we go. Ruthless Raider um, on the other side of the board. Two damage to the opposing Raider. Two damage to base. Uh, Vader's ping used to defeat Krennic and one damage to base. Faith will now, I guess, take the initiative as he lacks other options. Uh, Vader deploys and will probably hit the base for five and two damage to the Raider. Okay. Interesting situation. Faith opened up an early lead, but with Vader and that big barrage, things could change here. Let's see. Uh, let's see what happens. We could still see. We could still see a victory here for. We could still see a victory here for Faith, though. He could attack with the Ruthless Raider for four. <laughs> or he could. Uh... The problem is if he plays Count Dooku immediately to clear his opponent's Raider. Then the when defeated effect deals two damage to his raider, and then Vader can attack and deal two damage with the on attack ability to clear Faith's raider before it gets a chance to do anything. Okay, let's see how this goes. Raider swings in for five because he has uh, he has Krennic's ability for the extra damage. Makes sense. One more swing from that uh from that uh ruthless raider will win the game for uh win the game. Uh when defeated, each base takes two from the two raiders being defeated and two damage to an enemy unit, in this case hitting Vader. Um his dudeness misses out on the opportunity to do damage to a unit because there isn't one on the field. And now we see fifth brother deployed here. Uh, three costs two four gains raid one for each damage on him on attack he may deal one damage to this unit and one to another ground unit. Vader buffed by a tie advanced two experience here. Um, let's see here. So Vader still has eight life remaining. I think we're gonna see the takedown played on. Or what is he doing? He can't play Count Dooku. Oh, he's just rearranging the cards in hand. Yeah, he's he's got to play the takedown to kill to kill the tie advanced, or else just take the initiative here. Yeah, kills the tie advanced. Um, Vader basically has to kill the fifth brother. He doesn't. He goes for the base. He goes for the base. Why did he do that? Fifth brother can attack and win. Oh, he's gonna force choke fifth brother. Okay. Yeah, that explains it. So he, he's just pushing damage to the base. Yeah, then Force Choke to defeat Fifth Brother. Faith gets to draw a card, but it doesn't matter at this point. He can play Dooku. No, it's it's I, uh, it's over. He can't kill Vader. And even if he could kill Vader, the Snowtrooper Lieutenant would be enough to close the game. Good comeback there by his dudeness. He was in trouble at first, but uh, once Vader deployed, he was able to swing the game and uh, get control of the situation. So we're going to go on to game three here. We are one and one in this match between a trooper-focused Vader build and Faith running an aggression Krennic deck. Let's see how we do in round two. So there, I, I see an ample number of early options here from uh, from Dudeness. He resources an Agent Callus, which makes sense because he had two in hand. Uh, and then he resources the Season Shore Trooper, I think going to go for First Legion or for the Death Star Trooper. Faith on the other side resourced a Vanquish and a First Legion Snow Trooper. The First Legion Snow Trooper was redundant since he already had one. Okay. Death Star Stormtrooper hits the field. Initiative taken by Faith. Ping for one damage to the First Legion Snow Trooper and one damage to the base. Uh, I think there's a good chance Faith will trade here. Good chance that Faith will trade here. Hard to say.
He could also he can swing for a three though. I, I he might it might be better for him to just focus on pushing damage to the base. He is kind of the aggressor in this matchup. No, he goes for the trade. Okay. But he is he is kind of the aggressor in this matchup. That's the thing. Because once Vader deploys, there's potentially a lot of trouble. On the other hand, if he can answer Vader, he might uh Faith might actually have the better late game if he can answer Vader. Because I know he has Ruthless Raider, Count Dooku, and Emperor Palpatine. Those are some really big late game cards. So maybe if he can set himself up in a good spot to respond to Vader, he can actually be more the uh more the Hang more of the control deck here rather than the aggro deck. A little interesting to think about. Open fire immediately removing fifth brother. Before uh, Faith can potentially play a fallen lightsaber, which would have been, would have been quite impactful. Probably going to just play the scout bike pursuer this turn. That's exactly right. So scout bike pursuer, two cost, one four with grit, gets plus one plus zero for each damage on it. Uh, Vader's ability, however, can be used to ping the Scout Bike Pursuer for one, and then the first Legion Snowtrooper can attack, defeat him with the bonus damage, and remain alive. So this is a very negative exchange for Faith, and Dudeness is in a pretty good spot as we go into the uh, as we we're entering the mid game here in uh, in game three. No, he just claims. That's a surprise. That is a surprise. I would have thought he would go for Vader's ability, ping the scout bike, then attack with the snowtrooper, kill the scout bike, and do overrun damage, and the snowtrooper lives. That seems like a really good sequence to me. But he ended up taking the initiative instead. Oh, you know what? I'm so silly. He couldn't have done that. Open fire is not a villainy card. So Vader's ability here can only be used if you played a villainy card this phase. I was incorrectly assuming it was active. Open fire is not a villainy card, so he couldn't have actually used that ability. I'm sorry, guys. That was my mistake. Uh, you, the viewers may be want, watching and thinking, use Vader's ability. He can't do that. What is Tower talking about? My uh, My mistake on that. My mistake on that call, guys. Okay, so let's see what happens as we continue. Four resources for the tie advanced, buffing the first Legion Snowtrooper. Goes up to a uh goes up to a four five. And that that does enable Vader's ability, so we could see the um could see the ping being used there to allow the first Legion Snowtrooper to get that uh extra damage and overwhelm. Immediately removed by a takedown, however. Takedown uh Takedown's a pretty good blue removal card, four cost event that removes a uh, defeat a unit with five or less remaining HP. Scout Break Pursuer swings for one, Director Krennic swings for two, repairing the base. So Faith has the advantage right now, but you know, Vader is going to deploy uh, next turn. We'll see what will happen in the meantime. His Dudeness resourcing the Volunteer Soldier, which is very reasonable. This isn't a great card, quite frankly. Oh, Agent Callus ambushes to defeat the Scout Bike. Doesn't get a card draw because that the Scout Bike Pursuer is not a unique unit, but does get a unit off the board pretty cleanly. However, Tarkin Town then just used to defeat Callus. Tarkin Town's a good counter to um to ambush units in my experience, and I think trading uh trading Tarkin for the Scout Bike is a good trade for uh or I'm sorry, trading Callus for the Scout Bike is a good trade for Faith. Uh, Dudeness tries to use Vader's ability, but then realizes that he can't because Callus is not villainy. So instead, he swings for the base for three, oh, and then Krennic grabs a uh, Krennic grabs a fallen lightsaber, just like we saw in the first game. Swings in for five, healing his own base for two, and we see a First Legion Snowtrooper. This is this is quickly becoming a problematic situation for his Dudeness. It 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 may be difficult for him to uh, it may be difficult for him to to come back here but but he will be able to deploy vader this turn and maybe that's what he needs to get back in uh back in a favorable position in this game 
because Dune is contemplating the resourcing decision well where i think faith had a pretty quick choice resourcing inferno 4 i guess he had uh, two copies of that available on faith's part i think there's a good chance that we see the um so we could see academy defense walker um, but the current units aren't damaged so it's not like really maximum value I think instead we might well see the Imperial Interceptor plus Inferno 4. Ooh, an ambushing, uh, an ambushing seasoned short trooper with the energy conversion lab, taking advantage of the seasoned short trooper having the bonus for controlling six or more resources. So with a strength four short trooper, he ambushes and defeats the snow trooper while remaining, uh, remaining alive himself. Krennic pinged by Vader's ability, one damage to Krennic, one damage to the base, but that is only going to enable the Academy Defense Walker to buff Krennic. 5-5 uh, five, five, when played, give an experience token to each friendly damaged unit. Vader now deploying. Uh, initiative taken over by uh, by Faith. Vader can attack and defeat the Academy Defense Walker while also dealing two damage to Krennic, but will be seriously damaged himself. That is what we're going to see. And then an open fire on Krennic for more damage, but he's still alive thanks to the experience and the... Thanks to the experience and fallen lightsaber, Krennic is able to weather that attack. I think... Okay, so what, what do we do here? If we're... If you're Faith, do you just attack with Krennic into Vader? I think you probably do. Yeah, I think you attack with Krennic into Vader because because the the it, it's really like do you attack? Okay, wait, wait. So the question is, do you attack Vader with Krennic or do you attack the base with Krennic? If you attack the base with Krennic, it ends up dealing uh, it deals seven damage to the base, leaving the opponent on five life. But he doesn't have the ruthless raider, which would allow him to push that later damage much more efficiently. I wonder. I wonder which way you play this. If he uses Krennic to, to defeat Vader, his opponent's main threat in the ground arena is cleared, but he'll have to do some more stuff to stabilize. It's kind of an interesting question here. I think Faith... I think with the cards that he currently has, Faith would be better served by clearing Vader and going for the longer game rather than trying to push the aggressive damage and try and race because if he had those raiders it might be a different story but i think he's best served i think he's best served by going by going to try to gain control of the board and i note that he has the death trooper and the interceptor which could remove both of the other units that uh Dudeness has on field it's interesting he goes for, he goes for vader that that's probably how i'd play it let's see if it works out we might see him wishing that he uh wishing that he had gone for the base instead, but uh at least for now it is gonna be the attack into Vader, clearing out Vader and also healing two damage to the base. The tie advanced swings in for three. The death trooper hits the field, so this is a three cost three three. When played, deal two damage to a friendly ground unit and two damage to an enemy ground unit. So the two damage does two damage to itself and two damage to clear out that um Two damage to clear out that seasoned shore trooper. A ruthless raider hits the board, uh, dealing two damage to the base and two damage to defeat the death trooper. Then an imperial interceptor arrives, dealing three damage to a space unit and removing the tie advanced. Looks like he's contemplating dealing three damage to the raider instead. No, I think you have to clear the tie advanced here. Yeah, that's what that's what he does. Okay. Ooh, not the not the strongest draw here for Faith. He needs to see more of his late game here. He's gonna be in trouble if he against the raider if he doesn't get late game. Has he resourced a bunch of it? So he resourced a vanquish. Oh, he's resourced two raiders and a Palpatine. Those raiders having been resourced puts him in a spot of trouble, but I think it also makes his decision not to go aggro more correct since raiders are kind of his endgame reach card. So let's see if he can stabilize with the stuff he has on field.
Regional governor played naming Emperor Palpatine. When played, name a card when the, while this unit's in play, opponents can't play the named card. A cell block guard arrives to oppose the governor. I think we're going to see Del Miko hit the field. No, we see Inferno 4. Uh, look at the top two cards. Can send them to top or bottom. System, patrol craft, craft, and fifth brother. And neither what he wants here. Both end up getting resourced. General Veers hits the field. Quickly becoming a this is quickly becoming a problem here for uh for for faith. Deploys Del Miko, three cost three three, restore one, and each event an opponent plays costs one more. Oh no, and he draws a governor and another Del Miko. Faith's draws are really letting him down here. He has seen this small stuff rather than his larger endgame cards, which he really needs. He has the stronger endgame in theory, but he really needs to draw those cards in order to get back in this game. At present, it looks like his dudeness might be able to take it before uh, before Faith can stabilize. Let's see how this proceeds. The cell block guard uh, attacks Miko. The governor trades with the guard. <laughs> Governor trades with the guard. General Veers here was enabling those plays, incidentally. That uh, cell block guard was a 4 4 thanks to Veers' bonus stats, so he ended up trading with the uh, taking those two units to defeat instead of just trading. Imperial Interceptor now clearing out Inferno 4. The when defeated effect goes off again, though. More filtering. We see an open fire, and I'm not sure what the other card is, getting sent to the bottom of the deck. Another imperial uh, uh, regional governor. Naming Emperor Palpatine again. Raider, Raider hits for five. Del Miko hits the field yet again. Only to be removed by a forced choke. That is going to give a card draw to Faith. He finds a Vanquish, which will help, but he really, he'd really he really like to see Emperor Palpatine here. Emperor Palpatine could remove both Veers and the Ruthless Raider in one play. He doesn't see Palpatine, but he does see Count Dooku. That could be big. Oh, and a ping uh, from Vader on the Regional Governor dealing one damage to the base as well. I don't know. I think Faith... I think Faith is not... I think he doesn't quite have it. I think he's seen too much cheap stuff in that... Too much cheap stuff in the end game there. He has some big units, but hasn't necessarily seen what he needs. He can at least bring out Dooku this round, and... I don't know, though. If he goes to eight resources, he can open fire and then also vanquish, which might be better than playing Dooku. I think he... I think he has eight resources. What? He takes five damage? Uh, oh, I guess it was a misclick. Let's see what he can do here. And entrenched for his opponent's uh, Ruthless Raider would be really helpful here, but I have not seen it. So really what uh, Faith has to decide between is Count Dooku versus Vanquish plus Open Fire. I think maybe you do... <sighs> hmm... I don't know. I think it's too late. I don't think he's going to be able to get out of it. So it looks like he's going for the open fire plus vanquish turn. Opens fire to clear veers. Raider swings in for four. He's got to vanquish the Interceptor here, I think, which feels really bad, but saves some damage. Yeah, that's what he does. I think we're going to see a lot of troopers deployed here for Dudeness. Uh, volunteer, soldier. I don't. This should have been deployed after the other guy for more efficiency, but it doesn't matter. So... 
volunteer soldier, Death Star Stormtrooper, and then General Tag giving one to each of those guys, and then the ping from Vader, and I think it's over. I don't see a way out for Faith anymore. So he could um so what he could do at this phase, he could play Dooku and kill the Raider, but it's not enough with this swarm in the ground arena. Ultimately, ultimately Dudeness does get the win. I think Faith was actually in a pretty good spot but just couldn't draw the like later game cards that he needed in order to get into a winning position in that end game. After both leaders were defeated, he had multiple turns where he, I think he had two turns in a row where he drew regional governor plus Del Mico, even with substantial deck filtering from his copies of Inferno four uh, and their when played and, and when defeated ability, he wasn't able to get to the big end game stuff that he really needed. Interesting situation, ultimately a win for his dudeness. And we ended up going uh two and one, uh, two and one for the trooper Vader against Faith's um against Faith's command cr or aggression Krennic variant. So yeah, thanks thanks for watching, guys. Those were some those were some interesting games, and uh, yeah, we, uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content. I will catch you guys later.